Hi, I'm Art. And I am Tony. And it is winter. Yes, it is. And Garden Masters with a Z Dark is going to help you out. We Today we're going to take you on a winter garden tour and talk about planting for winter interest. But before we get to that, I have one question for you. When you're planting your gardens in the summer, do you think of winter? Now, most people wouldn't. But that would be a problem because you should think of winter when you're deciding what plants to plant in the summertime. Do the plants have berries? Do the plants have decorative bark? Do, are they evergreen? Are they deciduous? Because some deciduous trees look good during the winter. We're going to show you lots of examples of gardens that in the winter time just look absolutely beautiful. You don't have to think of winter as an ugly time of the year anymore. If you're a gardener, you can think of it as another beautiful time in the garden. Tony, it's winter. You need to have gloves on. <laughs> it's cold out here, folks. Anyways, I just want you to join our tour so we can show you the different winter interest and the lack of winter interest. Yes, because we also have an example for that too. And I'm embarrassed to say in our own yard. Before we get started, make sure you tap that subscribe button and, be, and the bell notification to be notified when we put out new videos because Ooh. we're putting out videos all the time and you never know. If you don't do that, you just might miss the one that will be the key to having great success in your own gardens. So this up here is our quiet place, our sitting garden, a place where we can remember our moms we have a waterfall over, or a water feature, bubbler, and the swing. Now, we've carved out that area to have a separate little sitting area. Little breakfast nook over there, the swing. Now here, a week ago, we cleaned up this garden. The link to that video will pop up in the upper right corner and will be in the description. If Tony will pan over there, this is our lily garden that has not been cleaned up. But our point here is this looks nice and clean, but there's no winter interest. So I want you to join us on our tour as we show you different examples of winter interest. And how they contrast with this blank garden. In fact, the the gardens we're going to show you that have winter interest are just beautiful. They look beautiful. And you know what? We're going to be doing the same with this garden this spring. Mm. So be sure to check out that video when it comes out. So who says you can't enjoy your gardens in the winter? This is our neighbor's home. And I tell you, you would not know we were at the end of January. They have the sound of their waterfall going through the winter. They have their heater in the pond to keep it from icing over. Now, let's take a little stroll through their backyard. And I want to note that this backyard has a lot of perennials all season long. As you look down here, these gardens are bare, but there's other interest. They've added a couple pots and put a couple evergreen trees in. It kind of is winter interest. And as you look at the back hillside, you have evergreen. You know what? Let me stop you because they have a beautiful wind chime going in the background. Doesn't that say peacefulness? Winter peace. Anyway, continuing art. Right, I'm sorry. So you have the evergreen shrubs in this back garden. And what is really cool about these, Tony, these junipers do not turn any color except for green. So we have our dark color of green. Now over here you have some cypresses and so forth on the hill. And they change sort of a brownish, reddish color during the winter. Those are bright green during the season. Now, over here, 
you know, we have hydrangeas that have interest in this area. You have the crepe myrtle over there. That over there that you see that looks like a ghost <laughs> is actually their fountain covered up for the winter. There's a fountain under there. Looks like a ghost. I think so, it's funny. When you're doing a garden, always think about the winter. And I ha I'm pointing that out, Tony, because look at the stone walls over there and you have other plants. Some are deciduous, some are evergreen. You have a mixture and it all shows up beautiful. It does. Beautiful during the winter. Now I'm going to back up to show you these little curved brick edged gardens. These are all perennials in the summertime. And they're gorgeous, but even though they're empty, it's still a beautiful backyard in the winter because of this hillside. And this is the walkway to heaven. <laughs> they have other gardens up there that are all perennials, but just take in the beauty of this winter interest garden. And here is that same garden in the summer. Beautiful, isn't it? So, this over here is climbing hydrangea. Notice how it's nicely pruned for the winter and she's added this berry wreath just to make it stand out. I tell you, I have such a great feeling when I come to this property any time of the year. Now here's another garden in their front yard that has a lot of winter interest too. Now they have a lot of perennials uh, throughout this garden that's like sweet woodruff, they have some coral bells, um, they have, I, it's funny because I tend to their gardens during the summer and it's I'm not thinking exactly all the Here's some of the astilbe and sedum that come up in this garden during the summer. So this garden, the winter interest is the shrubbery that's in it. If you'll notice, we have different shades here. We have the Japanese hollies. That Japanese are hollies here. down here. We have the gold thread cypress up there. And I want you to note, gold thread cypress, if you let them go, They'll be a cone shape and they will get huge. Yes, they will. Over the years, I've pruned this to, it used to be a lot taller. I've pruned it into a globe shape and it's really filled in and coming along. It has. So we have hydrangea, we have the barberry back there, we have a juniper, we have hollies with another different color. And now you can see that these shrubs are quite large. This garden has been was planted many, many, many years ago, and it's really grown up and matured. But this is what can happen if you plant shrubs in your garden. And there is no lacking for color in this garden during the summer either. So anyway, another beautiful garden. And notice all the rock work and the flower pot there. Some more items for winter don't interest have a flower in their pot during the winter it's a great it's a decorative interest. pot isn't it <laughs> it is winter interest and then scary ah! so behind me is our house it's up on a hill we are in our neighbor's yard right now and um, we wanted to bring this up because we wanted to show you a little bit about where we are in relation to our neighbors. Now we purchased this house many years ago and it was a blank slate. There were no gardens at all and we've been working on it through the years, planting more gardens, adding stone walls and things like that to make it more, um, more, just to add a lot more gardens to it. And well, fact, mainly, 
winter interest. To add winter interest as well. In fact, we get a lot of inspiration from our neighbors over here with what we're doing over there. And that's why we'd like to come over here and show off their property because there's a lot of beautiful gardens over here as well as gardens with winter interest. Winter interest? Ugh. Got little drabness going out here. Uh, somebody drove over our lawn back and down. Oh, I see we got some foreign grass. And that's enough about our lawn art. This is our driveway garden. And this has some winter interest by way of different shrubs. And I'm gonna show you those shrubs right now. We have some yews right here. Now we've lived in our house for 15 years. These yews have grown substantially. This is two plants that now look like one. And that's okay because we have a large hillside here and this covers up the hillside greatly and provides winter interest. Coming on down here, this is a blank spot here. We had sedum here, but it didn't really make it. We think it wasn't enough sun. So we're gonna plant something else here that'll be good for winter interest. And don't look behind me because all that is a work in progress. The lawn needs work. The other stuff needs work too. So coming down the line here. We but stay tuned because that will be a future video. Yes, we are putting in a wall here <coughs> and a flat area that we can store our work trail. That's what's going to go in there. So, when we moved in, the shed wasn't there, the retaining walls, the fence. So that's why we call it a work in progress. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, continuing on down the line, we have a series of five juniper bushes that look like this all the way down to the bottom of the driveway. And they provide another another feature for winter interest. Coming along here, we have some black-eyed Susans that come up here. Next, we have these false hollies. Variety is Goshiki. They're really nice hollies because they have a variegated leaf. They're pointed and they're variegated, unlike the classic green American hollies that you're used to. Now down here, we have some phlox that is the ground cover flower. These are brown in the winter, but they turn green and a beautiful multicolor flower in the spring. Just look at these babies, how beautiful. The purple spiky flowers are a juga ground cover, which also bloom in the spring. Here's another shot of the garden in spring with the house in the background. This garden hillside was more phlox, but the deer have ravaged them through the years, even though we've tried to discourage them. So, you know, it is what it is. It's nature. You just live with it. Moving on, this background shrub is a Rosa Sharon, and it has, in full sun, it would have beautiful, beautiful, large blooms. This one blooms a little, but because it's kind of shady here, it doesn't bloom a lot, but at least it provides some blooms during the summer. And this light bark is another winter interest thing. Tony, don't. Don't scare the geese, please. I don't know. Did oh. geese did geese scare away the deer? Nah. Yes. We have As you see, they're a little lopsided. Because we love nature. Don't they look just spectacular? Down here, we have a beautiful holly tree that's doing quite well, even though it's kind of shady, providing a nice backdrop. And you'll notice this garden down here has some rock wall. This is our annual bed and we plant shade annuals here. Sometimes we plant um, in patience. Other times we plant um, dragon wing begonias do well in here too. We've also planted some coleus in here. As well as spring flowering tulips which you saw in the last picture as well as here. So, uh, shade perennials do very well here and we usually fill up this area of the garden with some color. So, one thing to keep in mind is at the base of Tony's feet, that whole hillside is yellow lilies. Yellow that, day lilies. Yes. So, 
Even though it's a blank garden now, that is totally filled in with the lilies flowing down the hill. And there you have it, our driveway garden in the winter. And this is our driveway garden in the spring. And here's another tour of a winter garden with some winter interest. We apologize for the wind noise on the one day we had to film this segment. You know, Mother Nature sometimes gives you lemons. You just make lemonade. This is one of our client's gardens, which is a beautiful example of a garden with winter interest. In fact, there's even a little snow on the ground. If we start over here, we have a juniper bush that we keep trimmed like this. And then you have, which is an evergreen, and then here you have three spirea plants that produce beautiful pink blooms in the summer. Absolutely beautiful. These down here are coral bells, and they get a lot bigger with a rust-colored leaf that adds a lot of contrast in the summer, but you can see how it looks in the winter, very appealing. But now over here, this is a blank area where we have perennial black-eyed Susans coming up in the summer. Looks really, really nice. Continuing over here, these bushes are barberries, which have red leaves in the summertime, but right now they're deciduous, but it still gives a nice winter interest. And balancing the garden out, another juniper shrub on this side. This is the same garden in the summertime. Isn't it beautiful? You'll notice some flowers in the background. Those weren't part of the garden that we showed you here. And here is our next garden on our tour of winter interest gardens. This is another client's garden, which is another example of beautiful winter interest. Now we did not plant this garden. This was planted many, many years ago. But this walkway that comes up to the house, they have two beautiful Nandina plants, AKA heavenly bamboo, and the leaves are reddish and green during the winter time. Really, really beautiful. Moving over, coming up the front walk, we have some daffodils coming up because it's been a warm winter here this year, a little more warm than usual. This plant is a Cuba, which should have variegated green and yellow leaves, which are really, really beautiful, but they have a deer problem here. It's just decimated these Akubas and all that's left are the green stems. Say what you will, it still has some interest here. We have some hydrangea here, which could or could not be your thing in the winter time, um, but it's lighter bark. So moving down here, we have more spirea, like in the last garden. Spireas that get beautiful pink or lavender, I don't remember the exact color of these um, right at the moment, blooms during the summer. Beautiful, beautiful. Moving down here, we have a juniper ground cover. It could be blue star, but as I said, we did not plant this garden, so I'm not sure of the variety, but a nice ground cover, which is also a great winter interest plant for you or your gardens. Behind this, we have Euonymus. Now this Euonymus is having a problem right now. Um, the leaves are dying at the bottom and they're only at the top. So that's a subject for another video, which we're going to film and watch for that video. But when these were full, they were really, really nice back here. We're actually gonna be taking these out now because- um, We're not taking them out. We're actually cutting them down to about a foot and a half oh, okay. off the ground to see if they can revive themselves from the gall and insect damages. Yeah, yeah, but we'll get into more of that in another video. And but, hence, that's why it's not trimmed right now, because yes. we are going to cut it back yep, a yep. lot. So normally this would be trimmed, but you know. These are more spireas that have, uh, again, beautiful uh, pink or lavender blooms. Uh, we trim them back to look like this. The neat thing about spirea is you can trim it back and it will rebloom a few weeks after that, multiple times in the summertime. So it's a really nice plant for that and it really adds to a garden. On the end here, which is the last plant we're going to uh, mention here, this is a dogwood tree. It's a dogwood tree? This is a dogwood tree here and um, you can see the nice bark in the winter time. 
provides a really nice winter interest. So note on the dogwood, it's it would be way over the rooftop. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They've requested us to keep it trimmed back, um, so more like an umbrella here. So I like a, that. I like that look for those. You don't see so, that a lot, but uh, that's what the way they want it here. Yeah. So, so this is the garden of one of our clients, as we said before. Hope you got a lot out of this. I mean, all of these plants would make great plants for your own yard, which look beautiful in the summer and in the winter. There's something else you need to do to your gardens to make them stand out in winter. Find out what that is by watching this video now. Also, you can take your gardening to the next level by subscribing to our free newsletter with valuable tips you can learn on the way. Just go to GardenMastersWithAZ.com forward slash subscribe.